Okay, looks like we have our banner up. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our session titled Countering Violations with Reporting and IATA Platforms. Um, thank you to those joining us in the room, and thank you to those that are joining us online. Um, apologies for starting late. We were still sorting the tech, but I assure you that we'll be on time. Um, so really the essence of today's um, session or lightning talk is to share about um, some tools of impact that we have developed as paradigm initiative, um, tools that we believe we are using um, to counter online violations. So we have two platforms that we have developed. One is known as IETA and the other one is known as Reporty. So I will briefly speak to IETA and my colleague Iweze will speak to the other platform. So we know that with increased in internet access, um, the internet itself has become very volatile. We have seen increased attacks um, and violations that have been targeted towards digital rights defenders, activists, journalists, and ordinary internet users. Um, so as Paradigm Initiative, you know, we thought, you know, how can we help to make the internet space safe um, and secure for everyone? Um, to access it without any barriers. Um, so one of the tools that we came up with is known as AETA. So those that are joining us physically, we've passed around a few flyers and we even have a very nice bookmark to go with it. So AETA really is a digital rights um, security toolkit. So over time, we have been having capacity building exercises, uh, capacitating different stakeholders from the media, digital rights defenders, activists, on how they can securely use the internet. Um, so we, of course, together with other partners, we thought to develop um, a digital rights um, security toolkit or digital security toolkit rather, which is really um, a publication where one can access it. It's, a, it's, it's available online. So you can access it and read through and just learn about how you can securely use the internet and um, digital tools. Um, so it ranges really um, from simple things like how do you set up a secure password um, or how do you encrypt your information? How do you download a VPN? So if today your country is faced with an internet shutdown, how do you download a VPN? If you are new online, um, how do you secure your social media accounts? How do you set up a strong password? So it's really a resource for everyone. Um, it's a living document and together with our partners, we are committed to updating it. Um, on an annual basis, because we know that um, digital security measures, um, you know, they change every other year, you know, there are new updates, new applications. Um, so yes, I invite you at your own time, please uh, feel free to access this toolkit. It can be found at uh, www.ieta.africa. Thank you very much. I will now pass on to my colleague Iweze, who will take us through the reporting platform. Thank you. Thank you so much, Blanda. Um, today we um, we are uh, like Blanda had earlier said. This is the second toolkit that we have, and um, this is in contributing towards the production of digital rights. And um, online, the Padam Initiative developed this tool known as Reporty, and for us, Reporty is a Swahili word which means report. And the essence is that we wanted to capture a world that will be universal among um, languages and voices that will be African. So that's the essence why we choose the word reporting. And it was um, conceived to make it easy for individuals, organizations, and um, other um, rep others report cases of right violation the experience, witness, or that are reported. Reporting will allow you to, um, for a community response to these cases. So what do we do with reporting is that we know that most of these violations, they go on around communities where people might not know who to go to or channels through which they can forward the violations. But this um, platform, we make it easier for you and it is easy to be used. So all you need to do to make use of this platform is to go to www.reporty.africa 
And when you get there, you just click make a report and then fill the various drop down options, including the report types to, to be made, then the region where you're making them from, after which you will be asked to agree to the terms and then you'll be contacted based on the details that of your report. So what happened is we know that this can be a multi-region thing. So it doesn't matter where you're reporting anywhere in Africa. So what happened is that from the details you report, we'll be able to get across to you. And by the time we do that, our digital rights officer will be able to pick up those reports from the back end and passes it through a committee who will verify the report and get back to you. By the time we pass through the verification process, um, we are also going to go to the steering committee where we have lawyers who will be able to determine the level of violation that it is, whether it is um, that is an online gender-based violence, whether it is your, that your data is being misused. So based on the type of report that we find out that it is, we are going to channel it to the appropriate quarters who are going to take it up. At the end of the day, we'll find out that it can be, a, some of the solutions we do might be reporting to the country's human rights um, organizations or human rights institutes in various countries, or where it is also determined, we can go to the level of taking, doing strategic litigation. So, but at the end of the day, what we are sure everyone that takes advantage of this platform is that your case is going to be resolved at the end of the day. And once that is done, you are going to also be, um, we are going to also let you know the status of your report. And all you need to do, like I said earlier on, is to go to the platform, www.reporty.africa, and the step is an easy to use interface. Yes. Have you been arrested or know someone who was for sharing their opinion online? Are you being harassed or bullied online because of your gender? Or you think your digital rights have been violated in any way? Say no more. Introducing Reporty, Africa's digital rights violation reporting platform, where you can report all cases of cyberbullying, online gender violence, internet censorship, illegal access to users' information, and illegal use of users' information. All you have to do is log on to www.reporty.africa on your PC or mobile device. Go to report a case, report your case, and click submit. And someone will contact you through the information you have provided. What are you waiting for? Log on to reporty.africa right now to report and say no to all forms of digital rights violations. Thank you so much. Um, this is it for Reporty. We are looking forward to hearing from us. And um, one of the things, the actions we expect from people is one, to take advantage of the platform. Then the next is to be able to share the news because we might not be the ones experiencing violations, but we might know people who are exposed to violations. So what we're expecting is, I, we take advantage of making use of this platform or also sharing the news of this platform with people around our community so that we'll be able to fight online violation in every form of it on our continent. Thank you so much. So feedback and questions, feedback, all right. Um, thank you so much for the insightful uh, presentation on the reporty. Um, just a quick question maybe to highlight what are some of the cases or the common cases that you've received on the platform and if you could highlight maybe a case that you've received on the platform thank you thank you so much um like we said we come from nigeria and um, one of the most recent cases that i personally handled was um, uh, in nigeria um Yes, we have the proliferation of these um, online banks, banking apps that encourage people to come and take loan. 
So, but one of the things that happen is that in the process of taking those loans, the app will ask you to give them access to your contact. So in one of those cases, one of the reporters, the loan defaulted in paying the loan. So the loan, the banking, the loan banking app used his details and started sharing the news across all the people on his contact list. And unfortunately for him, that got to his boss in the office and the guy was suspended from work. So as I'm talking to you now, we are at the level of the case is in court because the guy, he reported, we verified and got one of our lawyers, partner lawyers to take up the case. So as I'm talking to you now, the litigation process is on in a Lagos court in Nigeria. Okay. okay. Question online. Okay. Can, can we? Okay. Just give, give the person voice. Thank you so much. This is even one of the reasons why we're here today. Um, like we said, um, you can reach us at hello at Paradigm HQ. Hello at Paradigm HQ. And we'll take it up from there. Like I said, when I was making my presentation, one of the things we are looking for is to get partners like lawyers across countries in Africa, because we get some of these reports from different countries. And one of the challenge we face is getting lawyers who will be able to help us to prosecute those cases in those countries. Thank you so much, my friend from online. We will be so much pleased and happy to partner with you in Ghana. Like I said, all you need to do is send us a mail at hello at Padam HQ. Someone from Padam Initiative, we take it up from there with you. Thank you so much. Uh, <clears throat> thank you for the nice presentation. I'm Santos Sigdal from Nepal, South Asia, and I'm founder of Digital Rights Nepal, uh, an initiative that aims to protect and promote digital rights in Nepal. And actually, we are also looking for option establishing such a, a help desk uh, or the report mechanism. Uh, and your presentation was really insightful. I have a few questions. So uh, uh, when was the reportee was established and how many kind of reports so far you have uh, received? That is one question. And another is because you said that you cover all Africa. How do you collaborate with the Law, enforce, uh, law enforcement officials throughout the African countries. And sometimes it happens that somebody report you a case and in the meantime, uh, the legal deadline might have exhausted and he could not go to the uh, law enforcement official to op file the official complaint. In that situation, how do you do? How fast is the service? And uh, the last question is uh, whether uh, if uh, other countries in least developed countries or the other part of the world, they want to uh, kind of replicate this reporting mechanism, what would be the support that they can expect from you? Thank you. Thank you so much, my friend from Nepal. Um, first of all, the question you asked, this is over two years that we've created it. Okay, this has been one year that we created it. And um, like I'm saying, from Nigeria, personally, I have been able to attend to 10 cases reported. But what happened, like we said, is we don't just take all the reports. There's a verification process because you find out that there are some of the reports that will come in that did not fall within the purview of digital violation. So not all the cases that we've received that have moved over to the next level. Because at the first level of verification, if it didn't meet the condition that fall within our work area, we usually drop it. So that's what that's one. Then like you said, which is even one of the reasons why we are doing what we're doing is that we are trying to get partners. Like you said, how do we, how are we able to reach other people? So we go, we work in partnership with um, other organizations in those countries. Like for example, the way you're saying you're in Nepal, if you are to do this in Nepal, we can be in partnership with you 
so that if somebody reports in Nepal, Padam Initiative doesn't need to be in Nepal to be able to take it up. So we have people in local in those countries who understand how the law enforcement system works in those countries. So, and in partnership with them, we were able to expedite action on every report coming from each of those countries. And like you rightly said, um, we are also looking forward to doing this beyond Africa. And then the process of how to establish this is not what the time we have cannot um, allow us to explain the entire process. Like I told the man from Ghana, I will also ask you to send us um, a mail at hello at Padam HQ, indicating your interest to partner with us and see how we can replicate something that looks like reporting in Nepal. Even if we can do implement reporting, we'll be able to share our experience of building the platform to help you establish that in Ghana. Just send a mail to hello at paradigmhq.org. Thank you. Okay. So, and for those online, the link to these emails have been posted in the chat. So if you want to get across to us to get more information about this, you can look up the, link, the email address on the chat. Right. Thank you so much. I am Ben Rashad Tamisi from Benin. I serve as uh, and communication officer at Internet Society Benin. I want to know if uh, so far you received some report from Benin about this right. And also I know that Paradigm Initiative do some report per country. How we as uh, individual, as researcher can contribute to that report? Okay, thank you very much. Um, off the cuff, we have not received any reports from Benin. Um, and that's why, so like my colleague mentioned, the, the platform has been existent for about a year now. Um, you know, we were refining the development process just to ensure that it works as it should. Um, and the next phase is where now we, we get it into the hands of our partners and stakeholders such as yourselves, so that you're able to then take it to the grassroots. So I'm very sure there are a lot of distress violations that happen in Benin, but we are not aware of it. Um, and that's the, you know, the gap that report is six to close. Um, in terms of how you can contribute to the Londa report. Um, so we do issue a call for authors every year um, that already went out, unfortunately, but of course you have a chance to contribute next year. Uh, but also we have the Net Rights Coalition. It's really a coalition of digital rights actors across the continent um, who you know, are working around issues of digital rights and inclusion in Africa. So uh, you put down your contact details, I'll be happy to add you to that coalition. Um, it's very beneficial because you know you have access to other distress defenders on the continent. Um, if there are any opportunities you know, beyond Paradigm Initiative, it's an open platform. If you're part of it, you can also post opportunities there. So I'd encourage you to sign up for it. Yeah. I see there was a question around what are the cost implications of using the platform? really almost next to nothing. Uh, it's just your data that you're going to use. And um, also just to mention that making a report is very straightforward. Um, it's almost a three minute thing, you know, put in a um, few of your details, details of the case, and then we pick it up from there and get back to you. So really no cost implications apart from your data. Yeah, so um, when your colleague was um, talking about um, some of the cases that are being dropped because they are non-digital rights issues, have you thought of maybe a scenario of having a, a referral mechanism so that also maybe um, some of those issues are being attended to as, um, as, as paradigm initiative because again, we are working towards um, an inclusive and just um, society where everyone is being served justice and all that. Yes, thank you. That is not a thank you so much. Uh, we'll look into it, but I think for us, we were aiming to not overstretch ourselves in the beginning, to rather focus on digital rights, inclusion violations, and then uh, we move forward from there. But also, I think Iweze did highlight that 
On the back end, we have a referral mechanism. So we, as paradigm, don't address the violations ourselves unless we have the capacity. So for example, if someone says, look, I have a digital security issue, my account has been hacked. We have partnered with some organizations that are able to offer that support. Um, so where we can, we've also partnered with women's rights online um, organizations. If someone has a, an online gender-based violence case, then we refer them you know, to the relevant organization. Uh, but again, just to highlight that we are really looking to partner with other stakeholders, other organizations who will help us to deliver that justice. And like we see our colleague from Ghana already um, indicated his interest. It looks like we have exhausted our time, but perhaps just one last hand and then we can leave. Thank you. I just want to come back to my previous question. I want to know how you conduct the report per country. If I take the case of Benin, when you uh, you want to do the report, how do you do it from the beginning to the end? I want to know the process. Okay, so that's regarding the Londa report, right? Okay, so we issue a call for authors. You have to apply, and of course, each year has its own theme. We have our research team that then give out what is the theme for that year. You get a writing guide that you and your, um, your coordinator from the research team. You have to agree on a writing guide um, and then yeah, you pick it up from there. But of course, it's a lot of support and a lot of details that are provided once you apply and you have been selected. It's just one per country, but we also have reviewers within the regions. Yes, so one author per country, uh, but we have about two review steps after that. Yes. Thank you, you're welcome. All right, we, we want to use this opportunity to thank everyone that uh, made a time to be part of our section. For those who are online and those who are present here on site, we want to say thank you. And we are saying that as the, we are going to have opportunities in future to keep engaging on these tools. Thank you once more.